like how much more do you need? Howdy. Welcome back to Dion Talk. About a year ago, maybe a little more, I actually did a portfolio deep delve with my two friends, Michael Zuber from One Rental at a Time and Matt the Lumberjack Landlord. I actually made this channel just to trick them into looking at my portfolio and telling me what to do. At the time, we had very different goals. My goal was financial freedom. I wanted more money coming in than it cost me to live whatever life I wanted to. I didn't care about unit count. I didn't care about bragging rights on cash flow. I wanted financial freedom, but they're smarter than me. They've been investing longer. Their portfolios are huger. Their cash flow is huger, if that's a word. So I had them look at my portfolio. And at the time, I was working. Since then, I've retired because I have realized I had enough. I hit what I call the 4X rule. My freedom number is a little less than 4000 a month because I'm house hacking, living for free. It doesn't take me a lot to live. Even if I travel, I go to con countries like Colombia, Thailand. It doesn't take me a lot of money to live my life. So when the cash flow past $16,000 a month, coming in that I don't have to sell my life for one hour at a time. I felt kind of silly going to work. So I stopped. And recently on a video on one rental at a time, we kind of talked about having enough. I have enough. I might actually have less units in a few years, sell one or two, pay off some debt, increase my cash flow, have more time freedom because two hours a month is way too much for somebody to work. I don't know how I do it. <laughs> but Mike, I've kind of been watching for you for years. You've you've grown your portfolio. You you know over 180 units. At one point, you had 187 when you were just killing it, and then you did 56 flips in two years. Uh, I've seen you do a couple of recent flips. I think where you partnered with people, but you're not adding rentals. And you mentioned you might have enough. And Matt, you said something very similar on the on the video on one rental at a time. You said you don't know if your goal is to add a bunch more units. Right. At some point, mm -hmm. we have enough. So mm -hmm. let's start with you, Matt. Mm -hmm. What do you think is shifting in your mindset that tells you? Because you've been on a growth trajectory, mm -hmm. 20 years of investing. I think the first 10, you you kind of grew. The last 10, you you really grew, especially like the last four years. Three, I think yeah, three, four, the yeah. most, three, four years. What is making you think that there might be enough? That none of my friends will compete with me anymore. <laughs> They're all taking their balls and going home. <laughs> I mean, more like kind of more what it is. It's just like, you know, you get to that point and it's like, you know, Mike's had Mike's, I don't think hasn't had a rental in like two or three years, like maybe one or two, but nothing, nothing yeah. of substance, like very much like the perfect deal, the perfect opportunity yeah. type of thing. Yeah. And I think that with where rates were and the fact that our market wasn't really mature yet. And so you could buy a single family home for 400 K but a duplex you could buy for 500 what hmm. didn't make any sense i was just like well then i need to buy as much of this stuff as i can with cheap debt and hmm. so that's where it was like i would constantly tell ashley i would just say there's really nothing i can do about it like i got to buy deals that are cheap cash flow because the cash flow is just immense i wasn't this unbelievable operator getting 30 and 40% on every deal because i was an unbelievable operator it was the cost of debt and so when you look at it, you get to the point where, again, my idea is, you know, acquisition, stabilize, optimize. Then you got Cody and Christian that then do the debt hammer. No real interest in the debt hammer because my debt's so cheap. So I think what it came to for me was recognizing that the next leg up to go from like 130, you know, 120, 130, 140 units to go the next leg up to like 250. Now it's a business. Now it's a business at one thirty. I don't really feel like it's a business. Like it technically is a business, but it's not really a business. Um, and so it's like for, for us, we just look at it and say, like, how much more do you need? Uh, the business has grown. I get just as much fun watching my students win as when I win. So if I can live vicariously through them and they can keep on winning those deals and we can go from, you know, the group having, you know, 10 or 12 units between the group of them to having, you know, 500 between the group of them, then that's kind of it. So I think for me, it's, we'll still do great deals, but yeah, the, the deals, like the three of us have talked about in the past, the deal has to be really immensely good. Like, honestly, if you see my face and I'm buying your property, you charge too little. Hmm. It's just, it was that, it was just a deal that I couldn't walk away from. And then it just didn't matter. And so you get to a point where it's like, I probably got to the point where after 20 years of doing this, I got to capital preservation faster than I expected. And now it's just kind of like, let the machine run. It's really well oiled. It does what it does. And, you know, we get the return on capital that we hope for. And now we'll just teach other people how to do it. Nice.
And someday you are going to realize that you have had enough work. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, I've realized. But not today. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, and then, Mike, to kind of follow your, your timeline, you were working at W2, had a great income, mm -hmm. um, had the rental cash flow coming in to where when you had enough of your work, you could just that one day go in at 8, mm -hmm. leave by 8.45, so call, call Olivia. I'm on the way home. <laughs> you had enough of that. You added rentals for years. You got into flipping for all. I've actually heard you say, I probably should have kept some. Mm. Should have kept them all. Should have kept all them of all. them, really? Yeah, probably. Yeah. I probably oh. should have kept them all. Yishka. Yishka. Well, it, 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 you have enough. You didn't need the cash from the flips. You don't really need the money from keeping them as rentals, but long term. That's the way that probably you're looking back. You say that would have made more sense. Yeah. I mean, again, I, 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 again, back to the enough question, right? So, so when you go to work at 8 a.m. and you leave by 8 45, you have enough. Yeah. Right. So, so we had had enough for a while. Um, enough if to kind of use a ratio probably was 3x cash flow, right? You said four. We were probably 3x. We probably could have made it 4x if we were to, you know, whatever. So it was enough. We, we, we could live. Um, then for me, it, it really became, how can I do more for others? Yeah. So when you flip 57 homes and I write about this at the end of one rental at a time, I, I created a business model that I thought was pretty unique. It, it, it has since been called turnkey. I wasn't familiar with that term when I started it, but basically I would go buy the ugliest house from a slumlord for cash. Cause I had it. I would fix it up. And I would stick a tenant in it and then um, I would sell it and I would make what I would make. To your guys' points, if I was doing this the right way, I should have kept them because I could have bird out, which is something I've been doing since 2007, 8, 9 when I wrote about mm -hmm. it on Bigger Pockets. So mm -hmm. I clearly know the strategy, but that wasn't what I was trying to do. I was trying to help. I think of the 57 people, I probably helped 35 people get rentals because some people bought two or three. I had more fun doing that. Now, was it cool putting 30 grand in my pocket, you know, on each flip? And if you take 30 grand times 50, it's a lot of money. Yeah, it was fun. But, you know, writing that check to the IRS wasn't fun. You know, I've, I've changed what I want. I don't have any interest in being bigger, right? Matt, your point about going from, you know, 130 to 250, it just becomes more. Right. I don't want to syndicate, although I, I could. Right. Um, for me, it's, it's, it's always been about what can I do for others. And I try to, I try to have fun along the way. So, I proved I can flip homes, which I had never done while I worked. It was never a thing I tried. Um, occasionally, I get annoyed at Crash Bro, so they're going to help me make a hundred grand between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Half of that's in already. Um, so yeah, for me, it's not the money anymore. It's what itch can I scratch? And I'll still do deals. I added a duplex early last year. I added a a single the year before that because the neighbor wanted to sell their home. So I'm, I'm, we'll add something every year, I'm sure. But it's it's a unique circumstance. Right. Yeah. And then the last thing is if it ever goes back to, you know, it, like if the commercial market blows up, like I think it's going to blow up, I will 1031 out of houses into more apartments. So there could be another huge growth spurt ahead, but it will be you know, things I'm laying the tracks now. I'm meeting agents, I'm meeting brokers, I'm meeting bankers. If it doesn't happen, it's totally okay. So, our goal is to get as many people watching to take action, to get on the path, to get to the point where you have enough too. Do me a favor and in the comments below, let us know what is enough. For some people, that might be unit count. You might want the bragging rights, you want, might want a certain cash flow. And a, and a little bit of a clarification that you made me think of, Mike, is you wanted around three times your your freedom number for retirement. Mm -hmm. I think the more money that it costs you to live your life, the less you would yes. need to multiply it. Yeah, I think if you course. can live off a really small amount, you might want a bigger buffer. Agreed. Um, the same yeah, we, thing. we could not live on four grand. Right. No. It's my mortgage payment's four grand. No, we're not living on four grand. And house hacking where I'm at, my mortgage payment here is negative $2,500 a month. Negative 20. <laughs> Show off. <laughs> so there's those bragging rights again that I said I didn't want, but there they are. I, I won't always house hack. I actually, I think I talked about this with uh, Lumberjack Landlord and yeah. Millennial Mike this week off camera on 
I might buy a forever home. I mean, I'm sitting on a half a million dollars. I, I should invest and should buy another rental, but what's enough? At what point do I go, okay, I could buy a rental. I could buy a forever home. I could buy a forever home that is a rental somehow, ADU or something. I need you to buy a forever home that's just an expense on the negative side of the ledger every month. <laughs> so we get it down. <laughs> This this whole my house cost me negative twenty five hundred. Exactly, <laughs> that hurts. Right, I know what but, his budget is now less than twenty yeah, exactly. five hundred bucks a month. Exactly. Right, so if I buy that house, though, it would just buy it cash. Sure, and not yeah, have. I, I get it. Yeah, I get it. So, and then I would move out of this unit, so it would make more than twenty five. Uh-huh. So it gets worse, Matt. Sorry. <laughs> if you would also like to make fun of him you can find matt the lumberjack landlord here on youtube and on instagram and on the business insider articles that pop up on facebook if you see a bunch of negative landlord comments tag the lumberjack landlord because he loves to comment i do and you can find michael zuber <laughs> here on youtube one rental at a time books course instagram i think you're on instagram i'm not on there so I know he I is. post on there, but that's just because it's linked to Facebook somehow. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how that works. <laughs> so, thank you both. Until my next video, thanks for coming to my Dion talk. We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time.